Let's get to your best bets for this week, your bear bets for this week. We're starting off with Iowa State at Iowa here. Iowa State's one and one. They lost last weekend to the rival Iowa 20 to 13. Typical slugfest with those two. I uh, excuse me, Ohio is two and one. They lost to San Diego State in week one, and their quarterback is now back. They beat Long Island and they beat FAU. Who you got? Iowa you, State. You, you, you mentioned Iowa. Rourke, Rourke, you mentioned Rourke getting hurt in the game against San Diego State, and they looked like the right side in that game with Rourke. And now that he's back, they went on the road. It didn't score a bunch of points last week against FAU. I think that was surprising, I think, to a lot of people how low scoring that game was. But they did come away with the win. And now it's a rare opportunity for Ohio. You get a, a, a MAC team getting a Power 5 team at home. Matt Campbell bringing, obviously, his former MAC coach bringing his – Iowa State Cyclones to Athens. Like I am an Iowa State fan. Like I, I, I am, I am attached to this program. I, I, I love their program, and I love the type of football they play. And I love Matt Campbell as a head coach. But the last couple of years, it just hasn't gone well. Uh, obviously, they had some issues in the offseason, having to dismiss a couple of players for the, the Iowa betting stuff. But again, here you're going on the road off of a game where again you struggled offensively. <laughs> Rocco Beck, Anthony Beck's son, the yes. quarterback for. For Iowa State, offensively, they just haven't gotten it going. Like 250 yards in the opener against Northern Iowa, 290 last week, including a pick six. I don't think they're going to go on the road to Athens and find things much easier because Ohio's defense has actually played pretty well against last week against FAU and Tom Herman in that offense, and then in the opener against San Diego State. So this is a um, this is a very tough spot, I think, for the Cyclones coming off of the loss in, in their rival against Iowa. And right before the Big 12 season starts, uh, circle the calendar type game for 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 OU, Ohio U, not not Oklahoma. <laughs> but uh, give the me a, give me the Bobcats plus the three here in Athens. Yeah, Iowa State's offense is 117th in the country in points per drive. Ohio's not much better; they're, they're 105th. No. But do you think the quarterback being back changes some of the numbers that we saw? Yeah. I, I do. I think the fact that he. You played the had the LIU game where he wasn't a part of that game, yeah. and then he missed half the half the San Diego State. I think that does matter. He did he, he did look good against San Diego State. I mean, that's kind of the the thing you have to do in some of these injuries. You have to go back and watch the previous games and see because the first half of that game, I think uh, a bunch of us were on uh, Ohio in that game, and yeah. it probably was the right call until the quarterback got hurt. It's the right side on the right side. All right, let's get to the next game here. It's Syracuse. At Purdue, we're going back to PU here. <laughs> Purdue getting two and a half points. Feels, feels like it feels like a sweet feels like a sweet sixteen game, does. doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Even yeah, though Purdue, Purdue, Purdue by the way, two and zero. Oh. Purdue can't get out of the first round, so it actually can't be a sweet sixteen. <laughs> We'll handle that on a different show in March. Uh, Syracuse is 2-0. Oh. They've outscored Colgate. Woo! And Western Michigan, 1-13-7. Purdue is 1-1. One one. They lost to Fresno State in week one before bouncing back to beat Virginia Tech last weekend. Uh, uh, Bear, what do you got here? You, you, you said it. Like, like, I think people are seeing like the scoring margin well, against Colgate, an FCS team, and Western Michigan, who's one of the worst teams in the MAC this year. I was surprised Syracuse was favored here on the road. But Purdue probably should have beaten Fresno State. They blew a double-digit lead and, and, and got stopped on fourth and goal there when they had an opportunity to take the lead back. Like, I, I think with Hudson Card in the offense and that Purdue offense now, I think coming home against the Syracuse defense that, look, we'll, we'll, we'll see this week when they when they face a real team uh, for, for the first time. Like, I I think a little bit too much is being made of the scoring margins early, and I think that's one of the things that you need to kind you need to kind of differentiate uh, early in the year. Like you see a two and zero team was beaten, like I said, Colgate and Western Michigan, and then you have Purdue, who's one and one, and they played a good Group of Five team in Fresno, who is going to be definitely a bowl team, and then they go on the road and you beat Virginia Tech, who's not a great team, but you went on the road to Blacksburg and, and you beat a Power Five team, so. Like I like Garrett Trader, the Syracuse quarterback, but at the same time, I think with Ryan Walters in that defense, I think he being a defensive-minded coach, I think they'll be able to scheme some things up. And uh, yeah, give me uh, give me Purdue plus a two and a half, and if you want to buy up to three for uh, for a little safety, I, I don't have anything against that. Uh, I think it's important you note sort of the opponent's teams play right because I think people do not give enough credit for Power 5 teams going on the road to beat other Power 5 teams. It's hard to win a Power 5 football game, yeah. especially on the road. And look, yeah, Purdue won ugly against Virginia Tech, but that should be taken as a positive versus Syracuse playing nobody and not coming back home. And we know Purdue is is tough to play at home. It always seems to be, especially if you're a favorite, you lose at Purdue. It's interesting because you, you brought something up there, and R.J. Young actually had a note earlier in the week that he tweeted out and said, great note, that there were only 
two. A handful of teams that played a bunch of Power Five teams in, in, in the first two weeks of the year, and only two of them are undefeated, Utah and Colorado. Pac-12, baby, 18-3. and 18-3, the final year of the conference. It's, Look at us, it's eight great teams. How awful is that? It's I mean, I, we've said it every – it's a fun conference, and they got all – uh, the, yeah, the best, great. the best year that they're going to have in a long, and they may get a playoff team this year. I, and I don't they're think going away. Chance. I think we just we're going to beat ourselves up to, yeah, to we, death. I mean, yeah. you know, next weekend, I know we're getting ahead of ourselves. You got you got Colorado, and Oregon, and you have Washington State, Oregon State. You have know, just probably two, three. What, a, teams what an interesting game there! I, 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 I'm curious to see what goes on there. I'm sure there'll be some uh, in Pullman. Yeah, it's Washington State plus two on, on on the look ahead. Not, not even the look ahead, but just like the two like out the two like remainders in the conference. They're like. Attached but at the hip now, what Wazoo and, and Oregon State teams that have nowhere to go for the coin toss. Do they all come out like like arm in arm, just to form like a little circle around like the Pac-12 logo and just hold it tight, hold it tight together? Uh, so we'll, we'll have plenty more on those games next weekend. All right, let's get to your your last uh, bet right now before we get to your best bet later on. Uh, Louisiana Monroe at Texas A&M. Monroe is two and zero. Uh, they won close games against Army and Lamar. They've only scored four to one points this season. A&M is one and one after losing to Miami this past weekend. Uh, A&M is favored by 36 points with a total of 53 and a half. Normally, this would be a spot where I would want no part of laying a massive number with a team that was just upset in a, in a big game. And now you come home, and it's kind of a sleepy atmosphere. Fans are disappointed that you, you went on the road and Jimbo Fisher and A&M lost another like big game. But I, they were so sloppy in that game that I think they need to work on some things. I think practice will be will be wretched up this week. I think I think they'll be dialed in. And, and you hit on it. This, this is a UL Monroe team that scored 41 points in two games, 24 uh, against uh, whoever the heck it was, Lamar. Lamar, yeah. FCS team, and then 17 against Army. <laughs> like, shutout is very, very much in play here for, for, for A&M to pitch a shutout against you. Like, there's no way they will be able to handle the A&M front. And I think on the other side of the ball, the AM and offensive line yeah. will just be able to – score at will like, like this has this has like 49 nothing written oh, yeah. all over it because I, I do think that the, the AM often like w- w- Wegman was fine like he did all he could last week yeah. they just were so sloppy made too many mistakes at special teams and on the defensive side of the ball missed a ton of tackles so I do like I said normally I wouldn't want to lay a massive number here but I think this situation and the and the opponent for AM uh, dictates a play on the Aggies you mentioned how Teams can maybe come back and be a little sleepy at a home game. Crowd probably not going to be 100% there. But I'll tell you a reason I like AM here. Their offensive line didn't play terribly well against Miami. Mm-hmm. And they're going to want to come out here in this game. And it's a former offensive line, but I know this feeling. And they're going to want to dominate a Monroe team that they should dominate, right? Like, right? like the entire week, they're going to be challenged to play better, to finish. And they're going to try to do that the entire game. And that's why I think it's a great wager. Cause as you mentioned, I mean, look, 38, nothing. And, and you cover right. the spread. Right. Like it's not, it's not very hard to cover the spread. If you don't allow any points, I think Monroe cannot score in this game. And you know, if, if AM lost that game, but didn't lose it because their offensive line wasn't as good or they you know, didn't get pushed around. I might feel differently about taking them here, but they got pushed around. They're going to want to come out and dominate in Monroe. Bear Bets full episodes drop twice a week right here on the Bear Bets YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to stay ahead of the odds and let's celebrate all of our wins together.